To live, every living cell requires oxygen. Our lungs carry oxygen into our blood and push carbon dioxide out as we breathe in and breath out. Gas exchange is the process through which we and all of our cells get the oxygen we need to live. Arterial blood gases or ABG is a standard measure of metabolic and respiratory functions in our body, as it gives clues about the gases in blood such as carbon dioxide and oxygen. We have learned different components of ABG in the previous chapter. Now, we will see the significance of partial pressure of oxygen, or PaO2 in our blood and diagnostic approach to ARDS. So, let's get started. What happens when the partial pressure of oxygen drops below the normal level, and what does it mean? As we know, our blood carries oxygen to the cells and helps them keep alive and working. The normal level of PaO2 in the blood is between 75 to 100. Here we have to consider two factors. Normal level of oxygen in blood and room air. If normal level of oxygen in blood drops below 75, when the patient is on room air or not taking any oxygen therapy, it's called hypoxia. Hypoxia is life-threatening if the PaO2 level is dropping below 50 as it corresponds to ARDS or Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Basically, ARDS is of two types, hypoxemic respiratory failure and hypercapnic respiratory failure. If hypoxia or reduced PaO2, it's hypoxemic respiratory failure. If the level of PaCO2 in blood increases, it will be hypercapnic respiratory failure, which we will talk about in the next lesson. So how hypoxemic respiratory failure is classified? What are the criteria for grading ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome? Let's understand the significance of ABG in diagnosis of ARDS with few examples. We grade ARDS into three types. Mild, moderate, and severe. There is a formula for identifying the ARDS, whether it is mild, moderate, or severe. Its P by F ratio is equals PaO2 in arterial blood gas divided by FiO2 or fraction of oxygen delivered to the patient. FiO2 is the fraction of oxygen in air. So, I have a question for you. What is the FiO2 of air? Yes, it's 21%. As we know, air is mostly gas. It's a mixture of different gases. The air in Earth's atmosphere is made up of approximately 78% of nitrogen and 21% oxygen. So when the patient is not on any supplementary oxygen therapy and is on room air he is inspiring 21% of oxygen which is our FiO2 in this case. The fraction of inspired oxygen that the patient is receiving is expressed as a decimal. 21% of oxygen equals FiO2 of 0.21. Now, look at this ABG report and tell me what is the P by F ratio? The FiO2 in this case is 0.21. The PaO2 is 62. P by F ratio equals 62 divided by 0.21 is equal to 295. That's it. It's our P by F ratio in this case. Now, what if the patient is on supplemental oxygen therapy and is on 6 liters of oxygen? What will be the FiO2? The formula to calculate is, FiO2 equals 20% plus for into liters of oxygen being delivered to the patient. Now in this case we are delivering 6 liters of flow. So, 20 plus 4 into 6 equals 44%, which is equal to 0.44 as decimal. So P by F ratio is equal 62 divided by 0.44 is equal to 140. 140 is PF if the flow of 6 liters of oxygen being delivered to patient in this ABG. In the same case, if we are delivering 100% FiO2, and the patient is on mechanical ventilation. The decimal FiO2 of 1. The P by F ratio will be 62 or 61.5, which is the PO2 itself in this ABG. Now, we know how to get a P by F ratio, it's time to analyze which kind of ARDS it is. It's simple, 
Mild ARDS is when the P by F ratio is between 200 to 300. If between 100 to 200 it's moderate, and if less than 100 it will be a severe ARDS. Do you know, the mortality of patients with severe ARDS is more than 40% in ICU, and moderate ARDS is more than 27%. Now, look at this report. This ABG is taken at FiO2 of 80% and the patient is on mechanical ventilation. Derive PF of the patient and how you will approach to correct this ABG in this scenario? Thank you for watching, subscribe to our channel for encouraging us to make amazing content, and visit us at ecgkid.com. You can also take a free course there. So what are you waiting for? Stay healthy, stay learning and in thanks again.